So it's a web page of, a, of an EU-funded network that I um, managed for four years called Intrepid. Very good name, I recommend it for anybody who has to work for four years on something. Um, and the reason why it's relevant to this session is that this was a four-year endeavor to look into interdisciplinarity, by which I mean the uh, various levels of integration of different disciplinary knowledges, paradigms, methods, and theories. Uh, I say that because the term has been misinterpreted almost, and almost every time it's spoken. Now, what is interesting about this for today, I think, is that I'd like to just tell you the journey in, in a few minutes. We started off and we won the funding because we asked a simple question. We asked, how can we increase the effectiveness of EU research by increasing the amount of interdisciplinary research we're doing? That simple question just showed how naive we, were, we all were uh, at that very moment in time. We were basically looking at how to do that and how to get more money out of the EU to fund international inter interdisciplinary research. Within a few months, we expanded our scope from inter to transdisciplinary research, which was mentioned today, but I'd like to define that too. By transdisciplinarity, I mean the collaboration between academics of all sorts uh, and everybody else out there who is, uh, has the legitimacy to produce knowledge but is not considered a scientist. Um, that became clearly an essential part of producing knowledge for the 21st century. So expanding to that, we then moved on in our reflections and we came to the conclusion, lo and behold, that the problem mainly lied back into universities themselves. So it wasn't really a problem of science policy and science funding. The problem was very much back home about how academia functions, how it sees itself, how it understands itself, and its mission to produce knowledge. So the last two years of our endeavor moved on to look at what is the future of universities? And that's what we did for a couple of years. Uh, we, went, we ran workshops and so on. And I want to summarize in the last five minutes I have what those two years delivered. Um, um, essentially, we started off by claiming that, with obvious exceptions, universities have been part of the problem. Whilst this is a simple statement, the implications are wide, large, and deep. What we meant by this is that, to simplify, uh, given the time, there are two ways that universities have been and continue to be part of the problem. The problem being, sorry, I should have said that at the beginning, in case it's unclear, sustainability, or the lack of sustainable futures, and therefore the lack of future, as far as human beings at least are concerned. So in two ways we contribute to the problem. The first is that by and large the knowledge production in the academic institutions is to serve growth. We are machines for economic growth and you don't have to look very far to find evidence of that. That kind of knowledge production is built and, and uh, thrives on very narrow epistemological theories and assumptions and systems. The second way we are part of the problem is that we tend to focus on system change in a narrow way. So we tend to look at the what some of the speakers today already have talked about, the inner and the outer, the two dimensions. And in academia, we tend to look very much at the outer systems and very little at the inner part. You obviously are one of the speakers I'm thinking about. So we ask basically a question, 
How can universities contribute to build and nurture a sustainable present and future where all life can thrive? This sentence is important, by which I mean what everything that ecological economics stands for, for example. Uh, assuming a central role in sustainable transformation of our dominant socioeconomic systems. So we, we move to a quite a more complex question than the one we started. And I will finish um, with just highlighting the six, um, I call them six steps in a journey because they're not steps as in one to six and you follow them and you've got the answer. They are the six elements of a journey that we are still working on and, uh, and I think we will continue for quite some time and which I hope are relevant to some extent to our topic today which looks at contextual knowledge and how to bridge between disciplines for relevant and effective learning. So to cut a very long story short, we have six things that we would like to explore and, and share with as many people as possible. The first thing that we felt was really important and has already been touched upon today in fact, all of the things I will say have been mentioned one way or another, somewhat implicitly, but uh, some of them explicitly. Our first point, our first step, was that universities must become again a place of where you question and you expose, by which we refer to the whole agenda, the vast agenda of frames of references that are being used and the assumptions and the worldviews that underpin knowledge production, knowledge use, and what is then translated into policy making. Anybody who works on climate change will probably know exactly what I mean. There is a lot that is unconsciously held as assumptions and worldviews. That level of unconsciousness is extremely um, problematic to come to solutions. The second point and the second step is that we would like universities to become a place of maximum leverage. And here we are building, of course, on the theories of Donella Meadows and her system of leverage points to change systems. By maximum leverage, I'm referring to what she calls the free last points, which are changing goals, changing paradigms, and Trans, um, and transcending paradigms. Now, this is a vast agenda for some institutions like the universities, uh, but we felt that given the challenges of the century, this was at the very little, the very least we could do as institutions of knowledge production. And here, just to touch upon some of the agendas, we're talking about the diversity of epistemologies as an essential basis, uh, the need to promote inner transformation, what I was referring to at the beginning as one of the prob being part of the problem. So all the self-reflection, the, the need to have higher levels of self-consciousness uh, in the production of knowledge and so on. The third point, uh, I will only talk about the first three in, in any detail uh, for the sake of time. The third point is a massive one, uh, which we've labeled as universities should become a place of transformative knowledge, uh, sorry, of transformative learning and of knowledge production, transformative knowledge production. And here, building on the vast literature and theory and thinking about transformation and transformative learning. We would like, we, will pl we, we offer uh, as an idea the playing between the know-how and the how to know. Schumacher in 73 wrote uh, eloquently about the, the limitations of the know-how and the need for the how to learn, how to know. And in fact, he went on to an even more simple and important point, to know what matters. Um, 
and we have explored and are exploring this whole agenda, um, offering, again, the need to embrace inter- and transdisciplinarity as one of the elements of this, the need to explore embodied knowledge, something completely out of the ordinary for institutions of academic uh, style, um, the need to have less conformity and more diversity and a license to fail, which is, again, far too um, absent in academic pursuit and knowledge production. Anybody who's familiar with the whole publication arena will know what I mean. Um, and finally, the need to expose frames of references, of course, but also pursue a, s a range of competences which have been mentioned briefly in other presentations. Uh, but of course, one of them is self-awareness and self-knowledge. Uh, I can't remember who ended up with the Socratic reference this morning, but it, it made me think that there was a link there. Um, the whole agenda of inter, intra and interpersonal uh, competences and skills, um, and, a cert and a renewed focus on the human potential as the ultimate driver of change. And but I am reflecting to some of the issues that have been raised about artificial intelligence. And in our, uh, in our reflections on the role of university and the role of science and, and research, we find that the bias of thinking in terms of solutions, in terms of socio-technological solutions, as opposed to human potential and technology as service, that balance needs to be at least much more in focus, if not much more a priority of the research agenda. The last three points would be a place for civic engagement, a place to envision sustainable futures, and finally, the universities themselves will need a whole system change. And UNESCO has worked a lot on them, and we are nowhere near target. So that's the whole agenda of Education for Sustainable Development, for example. So those are the six steps that we proposed um, in terms of looking into the future of universities and what, they, what that future might entail if sustainability matters. Thank you.